Hey, I'm really excited. No, no, don't, I, don't, don't be too dirty. No, I wasn't excited dirty. is dirty. No, I was gonna say. <laughs> excited is dirty. Don't say excited. I'm okay. I'm slightly excited, and that's why I'm. <laughs> well, I'm not. But I'm. And that slightly excited kind of implies half chub. Don't say that. I have a. <laughs> I have, a, I have a four iron. I have a half wood. I'm no, not, can, no, can, that's, I, can I play that's through? That's dirty. I just want to play through. No, no you, look, you just know, plug you, the. What? Plug? Do you want to do the back? No, line? no! I've got the show. It's coming on tomorrow, tomorrow night. Tomorrow right, night. right, right. See that then? Okay, right, okay. do that. All right. Hey, I'm uh, uh, Bob Saget. That's pretty, that's pretty dirty. Uh, uh, tomorrow night uh, on A&E is this new show called Strange Days, and there's, they're running uh, 90 of them, apparently. <laughs> they're running like 90. It's like 10 o'clock, they just start running them. And it's, gonna, it's a really good show. I, I studied subcultures. <laughs> what is that you're wearing? Excuse me, young lady, what's your name? <laughs> I'm Bob Saget. <laughs> I respond to that quickly. Yeah, I know. Hey, but it's tomorrow night. But yeah, I. Wh w what are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm not like all the cool kids and on cable. I'm still on broadcast, crappy television. No, no, no. I watch this every night in a robe. In a what? In a slanket. A slanket? In a slinky. <laughs> I watch this with. Is a... that some kind of sexy thing? It is when I wear it. Every. <laughs> all my clothes are cut out when you're on. It's tomorrow night. It's on A&E. Wait, wait. Oh, what's well, the name of it? What's the name of it? It's called Strange Days with Bob Saget. You know, what would be awesome is if you could actually be a guest on the show and actually plug it like a normal human being instead of just coming in, doing your plug and leaving, just... and then leaving me feeling dirty. I apologize. <laughs> Well, Don't be dirty. But you said plugging it like a normal human being. Oh, Where's my see? mind? What am I supposed to do with that information? You have the same mind that I have. In no, fact, no, Bob. I have the same birthday you have. We do have the same. We do birthday. have the same birthday, actually. That's yeah. True. Yeah. Wait. No. Wait. <laughs> that, you know, there is absolutely no achievement in that. Do not applaud it. Right. Enya. Enya has. Enya the has the same birthday as us. Let's do Enya. All right, bump right. sag, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, sponsored by Dell. The power to do more. More at Dell.com. Be sarcastic as well, you know. <laughs> yeah! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It, whoa. It's a great day. It's a great day if you're a nutbag loner. <laughs> nutbag. No, it's a great day if you're a nutbag loner. Because the Unabomber's house in Lincoln, Montana is up for sale. Finally! Hooray! It's the second best place to go if you want to hide from everyone. The first place would, of course, be here at 12.30 on CBS. <laughs> 
No one will ever hear of you again. In CBS, no one can hear you scream. It's a huge snowstorm in the middle of the country. It's cold out there, I'm telling you. Cold! How hot was it? Actually not hot at all, you idiot. It was cold! It's How hot was cold, it? Cold! Cold! It's, <laughs> it's so cold that in St. Louis, uh, travellers are requesting seconds on TSA pat-downs, just as they are! I might have something concealed. <laughs> the LA weather's just the same as usual. Disappointment with a cold front moving in from your broken dreams. <laughs> Don't worry though, people who are freezing your asses off in other parts of the country. We're with you every step of the way. You got a storm, we've probably got a graphic. Let's have a, do we have a graphic for it? Storm watch yeah. 2010. <laughs> Winter storm alert. Thank you, weather news. Me or was that actually good? <laughs> nah. Nah. Anyway, they say we're in for a very harsh winter this year. This is because we're under the influence of La Nina. Now, if you don't speak Spanish, that means the Nina. <laughs> the effect of La Nina has been felt all over America except Arizona. Apparently, La Nina doesn't have her papers. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Ooh, snap! <laughs> I think everyone should use this winter storm to appreciate nature's beauty. Remember, no two snowflakes are alike. Some are big, some are little, some are dirty, some melt on your tongue. They're like tiny little frozen Kardashians. <laughs> now, Winter isn't just kicking America in the balls, he's kicking Europe in the balls too. In England, there's a record snowstorm. Everywhere you look over there, you see frigid, grey mushiness. But enough about English people, we're talking about the weather. No. Come on! Do you tell? You know, I think that there's your... Yeah. Yep. That was my joke. I was really looking forward to that. Ooh, snap. Yes, exactly. In your in pants. <laughs> I can't believe now that robot knows what my look is. How hot was it? Was it? Cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold in Europe. It's so cold that in Italy, the Grand Canal in Venice is overflow, overflow, getting high because of the rain. <laughs> it's, it's going up. That, that's what I mean. Overflow, overflow, getting high. The Italians have been running around screaming, waving their hands in the air. Then the rain started. <laughs> You know, the Italian Prime Minister is in the middle of a big sex scandal right now. He's accused of throwing his giant orgies in, in his villa. But sadly, he had to cancel this week's orgy due to the rain. Everybody put away your amidabas. Put them away. He's no orgy today, I'm afraid. Put away the meatballs, pack them all up. In your pants. In your pants. What's the coming to go? It's been a little bit chilly here in LA. Cold snap like this, though, can cause fights over who controls the thermostat in the house. For example, I like to keep our house relatively cool at 65 degrees, but my wife likes to crank it up to 70 degrees. So we compromise and keep it at 70 degrees. <laughs> mm. If you think that's not compromise, you're not married. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> you know who loves all this bad weather? Weathermen. Jerks. Cause storm <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Storms like this are weathermen. That's, this is their time to shine. They get to elbow anchors out of the way and go crazy. They go, look at this guy in Baltimore. Look at this, look. Our paralyzing, crippling, record-breaking storm comes today! <laughs> the weather and go to 
to the bathroom. This is why we have TV. <laughs> In your, In your pants. pants. Yeah. Do you know what sometimes people blame weathermen for the bad weather? That's not fair, though, but I do it, too. If the weatherman promised me a huge storm and then we don't get it, I get mad at him. I'm like, hey, where's that eight inches you promised me last night? I get angry. In your pants. In my back. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> I know it's lame, but it's free. Anyway, they... The weathermen change their names to make them sound more weathery. You know, you get the weathermen guys like Stormy Johnson or Stormy Johnson, yeah. In, In your, your pants. pants yeah. Stormy Johnson or I don't know, Johnny Tornado or something. I think everybody on the news team should have a name that matches their jobs. Like you go, it's the news with Frank Murder and Daisy Carjack. Uh, <laughs> and now sports with Bob Groinpool. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Bob Groinpool and Stormy Johnson. In your, In your pants. pants. Yeah. Well, we got to take a break now, Jeff. Yay, spots. You really? I loves me my commercials, Craig. Say, you do love commercials, don't you? Yep. Why do you love commercials? Did I mention I'm single? I don't think you had to. We kind of took it for granted. Yep. Yep. We're going to take a break, but when we come back, it'll still be crap. be messing around, you never know who's going to turn up. <laughs> Let's just get... <laughs> no. What time is it, Jeffrey Pearson? You know it's time for tweets, Craig. I do. <laughs> Play the jingle. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. tweet. should introduce Secretariat to the news. <laughs> you ever hear you watch the news and you think, oh, the news is very upsetting. If you just got a quick ding-dong, horse comes out, that would cheer you right up. <laughs> uh, things are looking pretty dangerous in the Middle East right now. Tensions are rising and the... Who's that at the door? Oh, it's Secretariat! All right, all right. That's enough. I noticed you didn't clap yourselves that time. Getting used to it now, eh? All right, all right, let's see. This is from Steve in Lincoln City in Oregon. He says, uh, Dear Greg, if my letter is one of those that you toss on the floor without reading, how will I know? Oh, you'll know. This is from Brian in Modesto in California. He says, hey, Craig, have you ever thought there was a spider on your arm and freaked out only for it to be a stray hair all the time? <laughs> Do you know, once I was in Glasgow, which is a town uh, in Scotland where I come from, and I was walking across the bridge, just at Kelvin Bridge, you know, and I was walking across, <laughs> you know, the bridge at Kelvin Bridge next to the BBC, and I was crossing that. Right, that one. And I was crossed over this bridge, and I saw this girl coming towards me. Her name was Carol. And I'd seen her in the bar a couple of times. She was really gorgeous. And I was like, oh, here comes Carol. And I was like, mm-hmm. 
trying to look my best non-hobo look and she got closer and closer and she got very close to me and she went oh hi and I, and she pointed right at my face and I was like oh and she went I went what what and she went you've got a spider in your hair <laughs> and I did how hot was it <laughs> Pretty hot. I, once I get rid of the spider, we went crazy. In your pants? <laughs> yeah, we didn't, actually. All right, this is from uh, Maggie in, uh, in France. Look, it's uh, a town called uh, dig -a -dig -a -dig in France. I didn't know they had towns called uh, dig -a -dig -a -dig in France. I'll read it in a French accent, because that's what French people love. Craig, how do you know when and if? What? I'm doing it so that French people can understand me. Ha, Craig! How do you know when and if I am addicted to Twitter? I'm sorry, I don't understand your letter. Um, this is from Mike in Springfield, Illinois. He says, uh, Dear Craig, what is your favorite late night snack? Ooh. Ooh. I like anything cheesy. In your pants. You've been hanging about with Bob Saget. That's your problem. Yeah. yeah. Knock it off. All right, uh, this is from Howard in Atlanta, Georgia. Finally, a decent, respectable American from a decent, respectable town in America. And his name's Howard. But I'm going to do it in a French accent anyway. Hi, Craig! No, dear Craig, I'm a vegetarian. Oh, great. I'm a vegetarian and my girlfriend loves bacon. Should I try it to make her happy? You never tried bacon and you have a girlfriend? <laughs> Listen, if eating bacon will make your girlfriend happy, I'd get going. Because <laughs> it just gets harder after the bacon. <laughs> I think you know what I'm saying, subtext, you know. You know, if you can even find the bacon. Yeah! Yeah, because, you know, some people think the bacon is just a myth! Do tell. No, I can't. I can't. We're not on cable. Uh, this, is, uh, this is from Katie in Linfield in Massachusetts, who says, uh, Hi, Craig. I'm going, off my, I'm going to be off my feet for the next six, six weeks. Shook, say. Oh, I think Katie's a bit drunk. Hey, Craig, I'm going to be off my feet for the next six weeks, recovering from knee surgery. Any suggestions on how to pass the time? <laughs> Here you have some, uh, have some bacon. <laughs> this is from Julian in Toronto, Ontario, which is in the mythical land of Canada. Canada! Don't be silly, Canada doesn't exist. It does exist, it does. I've seen it, I've been there, and they have Canadian bacon. <laughs> Julian! <laughs> but it's really ham. Uh, <laughs> Julian in Toronto, Ontario says, Hey Craig, do people ever make up problems so that just they can get, so they can get their, just get their right to but I tell <laughs> Do people ever make up problems just so they can get their email read on your show. No. <laughs> when did Canadians become cynical? When did that happen? If the Canadians become cynical, what the hell hope is it for the rest of us? <laughs> we look to you, Canada, for optimism and cheeriness. If you start looking sad and downbeat and suspecting people of making up problems just to get their email read, Canada, And I don't know if I can carry on. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, I'll be all right.
We used to have a no applause sign. It's gone now, isn't it? Where'd it go? Yeah, it's gone. Still, we got the hand, so you're good. Oh, what's that? Oh, yeah, I use this for bacon. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. tonight we're experimenting in 3d <laughs> oh this is how awesome talk shows will be when 3d television is invented <laughs> you mean could they be even more awesome than they are now Craig <laughs> hardly possible <laughs> my first guest is a great big television star she is the anchor and managing editor of the CBS evening news <laughs> Please welcome the very lovely Katie Couric, everybody. Get it, girl. I do? Yeah, you should read the news in that dress. It's awesome. <laughs> I like when you sit on the desk and kind of shuffle your papers and they're kind of like, mm, I've got the news. It is so funny, though, when they go to a commercial break, like when they show the stocks in front of the desk. You yeah. have to kind of figure out, like, what can I do? I, well, of course, want to talk to the crew and say something to the writers and cut up. But you have to look very serious and pretend like you're writing something important. Do you, are you not really writing anything important? <laughs> not really. <laughs> but don't. Anyone. Did you ever, did you ever like, because you, when you read the news, you actually have to read it, like it's on a prompter, yes, right? Yes, it is. Right, so have you ever been reading the news because you've been doing it for a while and just kind of blanked out and read it and forgot you were even doing it? Because <laughs> I do that here all the time, yeah. Like I do a show and then I leave and I go, what the hell did I do? I can't even remember. Sometimes I'm thinking about other things once in a while while I'm reading the, a story. Really? What, what are you thinking about? Well, you know. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm thinking about, I don't know, just once in a while, but usually I'm pretty focused. Sometimes right. the teleprompter kind of hey, goes on the Hey, touch me again and I'll make out with you right here. <laughs> nice cup. Thanks very much. It's because of my small penis. Oh. Anywho. That's a double bluff. I've actually got a huge penis. So it was fun speaking of, I'm not, not I'm kidding about that, but I was well, fun to about see what? Bob, Bob Saget. You see Bob Saget by I stage? I saw Bob He's Saget. He's around tonight for some and, reason. And uh, I actually had a blind date with him once. Stop it. Really? Yeah. It wasn't really Dude, blind. Yeah, well, wow, that's what I'm getting to that, yeah. Anyway, it was it was very, very, uh, you know, mild-mannered. We had dinner. He was really nice, kind of lovably neurotic, as you can probably tell. No, I, I know Bob. I've known him for a while. And that but was, I've never had a blind date with him no. or slept with him. Kidding. I didn't sleep with him. Uh, <laughs> I, I never said what? you did. I never said you did. We I just, just say I haven't. Okay, good. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Did we, you think we, about it? No, no. Oh, come no. on. No, no, no. We, we had one date, went out to dinner. It was very nice, but apparently there wasn't a lot of magic. You know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> but he's a really funny, nice guy, don't was you think? Was this when he was doing um, America's Funniest Home Videos? No, I think it was past that. All right, because yeah, you could yeah, have hit yeah. him the nuts with something, and that would have been great, because, <laughs> you know, people in the America's Funniest Home Videos, they always get hit in the nuts with things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you anyway Katie what's um, happening on the news everything's great you yeah. know, I'm getting a lot of I'm getting a lot of ideas from your show though Craig like you, I, yeah the secretariat yeah. wouldn't no. that be good oh no like if the news gets too depressing You're right I think we should bring secretariat I out. think it's a great Don't idea it so? would be about like this oh who's that in the door Katie, I have a big surprise for you. You do? You dance with Secretariat, you get a oh, Secretariat t-shirt. Thank t -shirt. you so much. Thank you. Maybe I can wear this to do the news then. I, yeah, it's a bit casual for the news. You, you want to be a bit so? more... Yeah, I think... Uh, do, but you can make a nice dress if it's belted. Yeah, it would actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually... That was kind of hot when you even suggested that. <laughs> Do you get a lot of people coming on to you because you're like, it's kind of like the naughty librarian thing reading the news, isn't it? It's kind of like a sex thing. <laughs> it is. It's kind Not of like really. the news, like that. Yeah. yeah. 
No. No, not too many. I don't get in for that either. You don't? Yeah. No? Did I mention I'm single? There you go. Have you any use for a gay robot? <laughs> You never know. No. I don't know. No. Maybe. Hey, the last time I saw you was at the, uh, the well, the time the, before the last. The correspondence yeah. Correspondence dinner at the White you House. You did an excellent job, by the way. Oh, I thanks thought you very were much. really, really I funny. I think you, you were just, you know, you were fairly new to I late night. I was new and to were, America. And you were quite nervous. But I you was, did really yeah. well, and I thought you were you were very tasteful and funny. I really did. You had Could you some hear kind me? of yeah. <laughs> I think you made some some sort of. I made a joke about you. You did, yeah. but that's yeah. okay. No, it, was it wasn't funny. about you actually. What happened was I said that I was I tried to introduce myself to the people there, and I said, I'm what CBS can afford after they've paid <laughs> you fifteen million dollars a year. <laughs> And then, if I recall uh, what happened afterwards, you came over to me after the speech and said, you should get yourself a better uh -oh. agent, I think. <laughs> I, I didn't I, say that. I just... <laughs> I might have said that, but not with the F, not with the F part. All not right, with the all F right. Part. I added that. I, that was garnish. Do you ever read the news and think, well, I want to just throw in a tootsie fruits while you're reading the news? <laughs> like, guess what happened to the... I got a map. Middle East today. Like that. Maybe on my last night of reading that, the news, you know? Would, they would just, they'd beep it or something. When sort of your id and your super ego get all screwed up. Yeah. Like when you're at church and it's all quiet and you want to just scream something weird from your pew. Do you no, ever have Katie. that happen? <laughs> no, Katie, I never get that. You Tell never me about, think about that? Well, a little bit. You so. know, like in a very sort of state environment, what would happen if you just yelled something completely inappropriate? That, I'm you, sure, don't people think about that? Well, yes, but they are not the people who are the CBS anchor for the news, Katie. <laughs> that's why it's interesting. Well, I never because... do it. I never do it. Well, not my... yet you haven't. No, that's true. What have, I mean, do they have some kind of delay? Could they, could they do anything? No, you... they don't have any delay. <laughs> I'll give you all the money I have if you let me read the news one night. There's like, there's like 50 bucks here in singles. Think about it, Katie. Think uh, about it. Great yeah. feeling you know, here, 50 million and 40. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's all right. So you're rich now then, anyway. You don't need this. Uh, I don't know about that. Do you have a boat? No, I don't have a boat. You can afford a boat. You can have a boat. <laughs> and you know, boat, don't they say when a person buys a boat, the best day of their lives is the day they buy it, the best, and the second best is the day they sell it. Yeah, they've said that. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think they're a lot of work. And, you know, I'm busy. I've got two teenage daughters, and oh, I'm yeah, running yeah. around. I'm working. I'm sorry I, about that. Yeah. <laughs> I work really hard, and uh, so I don't really have time for... A boat? Yeah. I don't. I don't. But I, feel, I would like I to have one I feel such a sometime. fool, Katie, for even, for even <laughs> bringing it up. Do you have a boat? I do. You do? Yeah, a tiny kind? little boat. Uh, it's a little rowboat. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I row it around Marina Del Rey. Do you? Like, do, your wife, do you sing your wife in it, like Bing Crosby and Grace Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we, we have to take a break. Uh, it's something really? We, yeah, something we do at CBS. Will you, uh, will you, oh no, you, of course you know. Yeah. Well, you, do you have sponsors like Serenity Adult Diapers? <laughs> you do. And boner pills. <laughs> lot of, really? Yeah, a lot of I'm boner pills. So Although I don't think we need them tonight, Katie, and I ain't got it. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I don't know, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what it is. All right, uh. We'll take a break. Then. Well, we'll take a break. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. You, you, you've done that on the No, you've got to pay the bills. I understand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we've got to pay for certain things at CBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Keurig, everybody, we'll be right back. The delightful Katie Couric, uh, the jewel in the CBS crown. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a tough gig, though, taking over the news when you first started. People yeah. are very mean when yeah. you start taking over. I, when I started here, people were really mean. They were like, "He'll never be as good as that other guy." How, <laughs> how, how did you deal with it? Um, I just kind of ignore it, really, or um, cry. <laughs> I kind of, well, what I do now, I used to go, I used to Google myself. Do you do that? No, I stopped Googling myself yeah, probably stopped. five years ago. Yeah, it's yeah, bad. It's a real exercise in, in self-flagellation. You don't want to do that. No, I do want to do the self-flagellation, but I don't. In, in your in pants. My pants. Yeah. 
I didn't say flatulation. I Self said flatulation. flatulation. If I could do that, I wouldn't be working in this dump. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, no, what I do is I go on the Twitter now. Yeah. And uh, do you do the Twitter? I do the Twitter. Oh, do you really? I You're do. on the Tweety Box. Good for I you. Do, I What's do. What's your Tweety handle? I, uh, at Katie Couric. Very, very boring. And you're mm -hmm. at, at Craig Fergie. Craigie Ferg. Craigie Ferg. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Craig Fergie, Craigie Ferg. Yeah, it's all the same. Uh, but I just started following you. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. So I'm waiting to hear I'll words you of back. wisdom. Yeah, follow me back. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. You know, I don't know. What do you think of it? It's sort of something. I quite like it. You do? Because, yeah, because when anybody says anything remotely negative, I mean, and I mean remotely negative, block them. You do? Block them. That's I mean, so just funny. even the tiniest bit, Craig, I didn't like your, uh, I don't even finish the sentence. Gone. <laughs> Gone. I, I, I block them all. I'm That's like, good because yep. sometimes I DM people back who are nasty. Don't. I know. It's don't. really bad, but it's sort of like my friends say, friends don't let friends tweet drunk because yeah. I get sort of annoyed sometimes so I'll DM but I always think well could I DM something that as long as it could be on the front page of the New York Times I'm okay so it's sort of they're sort of politely snide but I get sort of annoyed but I try not to block don't, people don't. because I don't unless they're really nasty no I block them even, even, even slightly negative really? not even nasty why you're very because, thin skinned yeah you're very thin skinned no I'm just ruthless I'm kind of like Stalin of the tweeter <laughs> I, uh, I'm like you don't exist to me. Yeah, you're gone to me. I've only blocked a few people who are like are really harassing and, and some are quite vulgar. Yeah, I don't block them. <laughs> That's my people you, you're talking you about. You DM Katie. them back. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, hey, yeah. I'll DM them. What do you mean in your pants? Yeah. And you retweet it, right? I, no, I no, I I didn't I resisted it for a long time. I didn't I wasn't keen on it. But yeah. apparently now though it's the thing for people who are uh, a little older than teenagers. I thought it was a teenage thing, but the kids are all off on some other thing. No, I, I, I don't actually I don't think a lot of young kids tweet. I think it's actually people who are a little bit older and I think that you know, my daughters think it's really weird that I do it and you because you, your daughters probably don't, right? They'll be on some other well, website. Well, they, they're just know. on Facebook and they BBM their friends all the time. What BBM? What is that? Blackberry Messenger. So they do these direct oh. messages to their friends that way. I don't Look really at communicate. You I, no, no, about no, no, stuff. No. <laughs> I don't really communicate that way, but I think they're way ahead of us. I think yeah, we're yeah. sort of. No, they are. I but I, but I think as an information sort of system, Twitter has gotten really important. You know, sometimes. Do you do it on the news? Do you do it on the CBS News? Because well, I noticed started, the CNN are doing we, it. Now. We started asking questions during the Gulf oil spill uh, from Twitter and Facebook because oftentimes people who aren't covering stories day in and day out have really intelligent questions that are so obvious that maybe we forget to kind of talk about like right. how much oil is actually under the surface of, of the water or under the surface of the sand in the Gulf and the, you know how they much asked, oil is actually it, under it, the just, oil? I, I think we couldn't determine how much right, it was okay. just sort of an endless amount but they ask maybe about the the system that they're using to get the oil and they have really smart questions so right. a lot of times we'll solicit questions from Facebook or Twitter and it's just a nice interactive way to be responsive to our viewers, I think. Well, I wish we could do more of it, but we only have 22 minutes in the newscast, so it's very, you have to make very difficult choices every night. You don't have time for our dancing horse, then. <laughs> you know what? I think since I am the managing editor, Craig, I might be able to convince them. That's right. You're the boss. Not really. But... Yeah, no, you are. It's not like me, this some kind of Cinderella sweeping up night after night. <laughs> You're in charge? It's no, like if I was no, me, I'm not. Huh? I'm hardly in charge. I'm hardly in charge. We have a whole team of people, an executive producer, and then, of course, some other people who weigh in on decisions. But at You're least, kind of in charge, though, it, at least I can say I don't feel comfortable with this, or we really need to move this story, or what about this story? And they, they listen to me about 50% of the time. No, it's not bad. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. It's about like being married, really, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> well, we're out of time, Katie. Really? Yeah, what do you want, mouth organ or awkward silence? <laughs> Well, I don't have a band, so it's, uh, you know, when the guest, you know, we were out of time with the guest oh, and the and band plays, yeah. well, well, but I got a mouth organ or we could I do want, an... I want the harmonica because I can play No, no, the it's harmonica. not a harmonica, Katie. It's not? It's no. a mouth organ? Yeah, it's a okay, mouth organ, Okay, give right. me a little number on the mouth organ. Oh, I will. <laughs> uh, Are you always this cheeky? Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, not with Bob Sagan. All right. No. There's yours. Really? Yeah, it's a fresh one. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, I can actually a, play yeah. this. I'm not going to now, but I can play Shenandoah on, on this. You're going to now. Again. You're going to now. Really? Yeah. I don't think yeah. we have time. You really can? Uh -huh, let's see. Wait.
Wait a second, hold on. is a very, very funny comedian, which is, you want to be that if you're a comedian, because being a crap comedian, you end up here. Uh, <laughs> he's a very funny comedian. Uh, you can see him the New Year's Eve at the Punchline in Sacramento. Please welcome the lovely Al Madrigal, everybody. Al Madrigal. Right over here. <laughs> That's good. I'll eventually find it. How are you guys doing? Uh, it's good, great to be here. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'll tell you guys about myself. I've got uh, a couple kids. I've got a little dog that only I seem to be responsible for. I've got a wife, and then I've got a house uh, to go along with the whole package. The wife and the dog are fantastic. It's the kids and the house that are really kicking my butt. The kids are starting to talk back, and the worst part about it is that they're making sense. Um, <laughs> my son actually said this to me the other day. We were going to over a friend's house, my buddy's house, and my son comes walking out, six years old, with floods, with holes in both knees. And I go, dude, you gotta go change those pants, man. Where'd you get those pants? He goes, I'm not changing these pants. They're my favorite pants. And I go, you got it. You're gonna, you're gonna change them, or you're gonna be embarrassed. And he goes, I'm not gonna be embarrassed. They're your friends. You're gonna be embarrassed. <laughs> Touche, six-year-old. Touche. And then the house is the worst. I bought the house at the worst possible time to buy the house. That's when I was out looking at the height of the real estate market. I found a place in a soon-to-be gentrified neighborhood. Do you guys know what that means? It means I bought a house in Los Angeles uh, <laughs> for about $700,000 in a crappy neighborhood in hopes that I could fix it up someday and work on it. So eventually one day it might be worth $700,000. Then. <laughs> And my neighbors are the worst. I'm actually in a couple of fights with my neighbors right now because I live across from the, uh, the uh, house with weeds all over the place. Uh, you see that? That's my problem. It's a black guy across the street, and he made it about race. It has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with the weeds. I'm actually half Mexican, married to a half Korean with white children. Uh, it's a <laughs> rainbow at our dinner table, and it's nothing about race. But he made it about it. Um, so I tell my wife, I go, honey, with the weeds, it's like the movie I Am Legend over there. What's happening? And uh, I think that's pretty funny. So I go over to the black guy, and I'm like, hey, man, it's like I Am Legend over here, huh? And he goes, you saying that because I'm a black man <laughs> with a German shepherd? And I'm like, when'd you get the German shepherd? It's perfect, all right? If that's what you're going for, I apologize, because you're nailing it. Uh, <laughs> And then the other neighbor I've got is Blue Tarp Guy. You ever see that house where um, it rained and they couldn't afford to fix their roof? So they put a blue tarp over the problem area. They classed it up with some bricks as a temporary fix. And then two years later, it's still up there. And it's making me crazier by the day. Uh, I find myself scrutinizing every purchase that the guy makes. I'm like... Are those new Adidas? That son of a bitch. And he comes up to me a couple days ago, and he walks up, and he's like, hey, man, you see Avatar on Blu-ray? I'm like, did you see Avatar on Blu-ray? <laughs> Fix your roof, man, all right? Save up, all right? The only thing blue you should be worried about is on your roof, all right? All right, thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to have magic on. What did we learn on the show tonight, Greg? 
I talked too long, apparently, tonight. we got to go. Good night, everybody. Good night.